Awesome. Thanks, Ari. You're welcome, Dallin. All right. So we are recording. Welcome, everybody. I am so incredibly thrilled to be here with you this afternoon. This is a subject that is so incredibly dear to my heart, and it is a practice that I have been using in my own life for as long as I can remember. And so it is my absolute honor to share this with you. The topic for today is to interlace essential oils, flower remedies, which I use Bach flower remedies or batch flower remedies and crystals. And I've been practicing with these tools for, uh, let's just say the, the better half of a decade the better part of a decade. And I have found them to be really great tools of divination and also to support me in um, my physical, my emotional and my spiritual well-being. When I say a tool of divination, I mean a tool that supports me towards uh, communicating with and being with the divine. And so the divine can come in many forms and you can call it whatever it is that you want to call it. Um, and it's this source energy that is bigger than us, but it also lives within us. It's in us and all around us. Some people refer to it as universe, source, God, Allah, whatever it is you want to call him or her. This is divine um, connection, divine uh divine intuition, divine everything, divine wisdom. So when I talk about using subtle aromatherapy, I'm using aromatherapy to support the subtle body. And the subtle body can be everything from the physical body reaching out in your aura. And so for this class, I'm not exactly going to go through all of the points of your aura, but please know that there are many layers that reach out from your physical body out into your space and your aura can reach out as far as you are expanded, um, which changes according to the way that you feel. So when we feel uh, the negative emotions, we generally contract, not only in our bodies, when we feel fearful, our shoulders can collapse uh, perhaps we crouch over, we hinge at the hips. This is a contraction of the physical body. And not only does the physical body contract, but the auric body and the subtle energy body will also contract. It's important to know that the physical body and the subtle body are not separate from one, one another. They are very much connected. What you feel in your physical body, you feel in your subtle body. And within your subtle body, you have your emotional body, um, your mental body and your spiritual body or your spirit body. And there are other layers as well, but I really focus on those three plus the physical body. And I like speaking about those. Even if I do speak about them as separate things, please know it's like a little Russian doll. So you have your physical body that fits inside of all of the other layers, um, but they do affect one another. So an example of this is, when you have an emotional experience, you can experience that emotion in your physical body. You know, when you're crying a lot, perhaps you're grieving or going through a really challenging event in your life, you will feel the remnants of that emotion in your physical body. You may feel um, something in the pit of your belly. You may feel some, sometimes I've even felt that my heart is actually breaking. You know, you feel it in your body, it's visceral. And so with that being said, we can use these tools to support us regardless of which body we're working with. It is said that experiences happen further out in our energy field before they affect our physical body. And the more sensitive and attuned or in tune with either your environment or your, your subtle energy body, the more you are attuned to it, the quicker you can catch whatever it is that's coming up in your auric field before it makes its way to the physical body to cause this ease or disease. And so the idea of working in this way is to create 
practices, tools, rituals that allow us the space to be still, to honor whatever's going on for us, whether it be in the mental body, the emotional body or the spirit body. And for us to gauge not only how we're feeling or what we're feeling, but what it is that we need to help us resolve those emotions or those states of being. So if there are any questions that come through, darling, you can just um, pop it in the chat, okay? And so the idea here, as we're working through this content, is to remember that there are so many different ways of explaining this information. There are so many elements that need to be included when we talk about this. This is a subject that you could study for years. And I'm gonna do my best to keep it concise and within the hour. But if there are any questions that come up from those of you watching the recording, feel free to email me and ask me so that I can be of service in that way too. And just make sure that you watch until the end because like I said in the invitation to this, I am, uh, announcing some really cool product releases, uh, which I am not even close to announcing to the public. So it's a very exciting announcement to only those who are watching this video. But first of all, I want to talk a little bit about aromatic anchoring. Now, this topic has been thrown around a lot in aromatherapy circles, and you can learn about it online. It is very basic uh, practice and a tool, and I use it a lot. But not only do I use it in the use of my aromatics and my Bach flower remedies, but I also use it with my crystals as well. And so it works in the way that when you take a deep breath in of a scent or a smell, it makes its way through the nasal passages and has a direct connection to your limbic brain, your emotional brain. The amount of times that you've walked past a bakery, for example, and you've smelt that same smell that you used to um, enjoy from your grandmother's kitchen. And it takes you back 30 years to you being the little six-year-old sitting in your granny's kitchen waiting for her to finish the baked goods. The, that ability to take you back is A, incredible, B, really quick, instantaneous. You don't even have to logically think about it. You just get transported through to that time. And so the idea with aromatic anchoring is that you do the same thing, except you're doing it consciously. So where that example is quite unconscious, it is a result of something that happened in your youth we as adults can create aromatic anchors to help us create whatever it is that we're looking to call in. And so I work predominantly with the seven energy centers that work in the body. These energy centers connect our physical body, the glands, the nerve plexuses that run in and around our bodies, but they also connect to our auric field. So if you concentrate and focus in on any of those energy centers and you understand them deeply, intimately, and understand how they connect to those bodies that live outside of you, the auric field, then you can use these remedies to help you with your auric field, with your energy centers, but also to help you co-create from that particular energy center, which is super powerful. And so as we go through uh, just a very few of my favorite oils, remedies and crystals, know that this is not conclusive. We could talk about this for hours. And I use this aromatic anchoring a lot as I'm creating these rituals. Rituals for me have been something that have kept me super grounded and have at times saved me. And I feel like we don't do this enough in our lives. We're so busy running from one thing to the next, trying to hustle and grind to make things happen. When 
quite often, if we allow ourselves the space and the opportunity to sit and create a ritual or perform a ritual, which can be as simple as you being quiet with an, a cup of coffee in the morning, looking out the window, inquiring into how you feel, that can be your ritual, right? That can be a very basic, beautiful ritual. The rituals that I'm talking about actually build on that. They build on that in that you take these products and you anchor yourself into something that you want to feel. And whenever you're feeling out of that alignment, so say you're looking to call in a state of equanimity and peace, and perhaps you're going through a time in your life where you don't feel that and, it's, and you're struggling. Well, the thought of that time in your ritualistic practice or the smell of the aromatic anchor that you've used during that ritualistic practice can serve as a really powerful tool to bring you back to that feeling of equanimity and peace. And so it does take work. The oils and the remedies and the crystals are not gonna do it for you. They serve as tools to support you as you go about creating whatever it is you're looking to create in your life and it's a very important part to remember because you can't just slap on a bit of rose oil and expect to feel divinely feminine and beautiful and wonderful <laughs> it doesn't work like that you create the sense of what rose helps you to feel and one day when you're feeling a little bit off kilter you will remember how you programmed yourself basically and use that aromatic anchor to bring you into that state of being. So I hope that that makes sense and that it, um, it sinks in. Radio. Let's have a sip of water. Firstly, Let's talk about how oils in themselves and crystals and flower remedies can support us physically. For that purpose, I wanted to bring out two blends that doTERRA do called On Guard and Digest Zen. These are quite possibly two of the most popular blends that doTERRA have and promote simply because they are everyday favorites. So On Guard is our protective blend and Digestin is the digestive blend. When you feel like your belly is suffering from indigestion, what emotions would you experience when you feel uncomfortable? Right, I'm not gonna answer the questions for you. I'm just going to pose the questions so that you can do a bit of self-inquiry for yourself. Um, and Trish, if you wanna pop your answers into the chat so I can work with you, that is a-okay, my love. And when you use On Guard as a protective blend, what is the reason that you're using this blend? Right, You're using it to protect your physical body. And so there is an underlying emotion that always, 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 always drives our behavior. So when you're taking, perhaps you've experienced tummy troubles because you are feeling anxious or because you feel that there are too many things going on and you don't even know where to start, you feel overwhelmed. Yeah, uncomfortable, on edge. Perfect, that's exactly. And those emotions drive your belly to go into a knot. And so you use Digest Zen as a support to help you relieve any uneasiness in the belly. And there are a lot of other ways that you could use this blend or reasons you would use this blend from a physiological perspective but let's just stick to the emotions for now and so you can very quickly and easily see how when you have a physical experience it's generally 
undertone, the undertone is from an emotional, um, like a feeling, something that you're going through. Sometimes those emotions are conscious emotions and sometimes they're unconscious. Sometimes we don't even pay attention to the fact that we're feeling a certain way and that's why our belly is the way it is. So one of the questions I want you to get really comfortable with asking yourself uh, is why? Why? Why do I feel this way? Why is my tummy sore? Why am I using on guard, on my person, like on my, on my body? What is it about on guard that has me reaching for it? What's fear? Fear of being unwell. And that is the negative state. The positive side of that is that you're looking for wellness. You're looking for support. You're looking for protection. Now, protection and fear are the two sides of the same coin. And we can look at it from the negative perspective and we can also look at it from the positive perspective. And it doesn't really matter which way you look at it if you're looking at it objectively, right? Same thing goes for digestion. You could look at it from, you know, a, as a preventative, like I just take a drop of digestion under my tongue every day, sometimes twice a day. A, I love the taste. It's fresh, minty. I just dig it, right? So it's a preventative or I can use it when I'm feeling in that negative state. In fact, I went out for lunch last week and um, within a couple of bites of my lunch, I started to feel my belly getting really tight and I carry digestion with me everywhere. And I popped a drop under my tongue, waited a few minutes and I was fine. And so you can use just the same way as you, you, as, you, as you look at these two blends that are so well known and so well used and revered, you could look at all of the oils in the same way. You can look at it from a negative perspective. So the way that you want to draw yourself out of a feeling or event or circumstance, like you know the, the, the way that you're experiencing it, or as a preventative or something that you're actually looking to draw closer to you. Um, in terms of an emotion or a way you want to feel. Now, I say you can look at it both ways as long as you're looking at it objectively. And what I mean by that is that um, you don't want to be looking at your negative emotions, right, um, or your positive emotions for that matter, and being attached to them and um, and what, what I'm referring to there is that when I feel a certain way, um, I know that this and only this, this oil and only this oil is going to support me to feel a different way. There are other things that need to happen along with that, you know, change of mindset, um, these ritualistic practices that I'm going through as well. And sometimes it can be as simple as dropping something under the tongue, but sometimes you do have to work a little bit harder at supporting yourself through that emotion. It's not the be all and the end all. All right. So when I'm using, and I'm going to continue just using these two as examples because it will give you a very good picture, a base, so that when we're working through the other oils and the flower remedies, you, I can just run through them really quickly and you will understand what I'm talking about. So we have these two oils, digestion and on guard. The first one is for belly. The second one is for protection. Belly relates to the solar plexus chakra or energy center, as I call them. On guard works with the base energy center. And so knowing that about these two oils, you could do myriad of different things that are going to help you and support you with these two things. Because the solar plexus energy center sits directly in line with your stomach, then you will, um, perhaps you will do some deep breathing. Now, I know that the, your breath doesn't go into your stomach, but your diaphragm muscle, if I were to just move this down here, your diaphragm muscle is this umbrella shaped muscle that kind of runs underneath your rib cage. And so as you're breathing in and as you're breathing out, if you are doing full deep belly breaths, 
the contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm muscle will have an immediate effect on the organs that sit in and around that muscle. So you're going to be massaging your belly or your stomach, shall I say, your liver, your lungs, your heart. So by understanding that this energy center can be activated by deep belly breathing, you could then combine the essential oil, the deep belly breath, and perhaps you wanna take your right hand and place it onto your energy center, your, your solar plexus right here, so that as you're breathing, you're watching your hand go in and, and out, and the warmth from your hand will naturally draw attention to your hand and to your belly. And in such, you will be doing what we call an energy healing, right? So you'll actually use energy, which we don't have enough time to explain it in this particular um, workshop, but you will be healing yourself in some way, shape or form by simply touching your body. Uh, the same goes for on guard. A lot of the times we get instructed to place on guard onto the soles of the feet. Perfect thing because the base energy center resides in, in and around the base of the spine and moves its way down the legs and into the soles of the feet. And so you can imagine your legs being the trees of a trunk, the trunk of a tree <laughs> and the roots of your tree growing out the soles of your feet into the core of the earth. And so this blend, this protective blend will serve to help you stay grounded and therefore to protect you because the deeper your roots go into the ground as a tree, the more stable and firm and grounded you are so that when the winds come, when the rains come and the storms come, you are solid, you are protected, all right? And so you would visualize with this, you would visualize yourself strong, sturdy, grounded, okay? Now with flower remedies, what you may do is use corresponding flower remedies that help you with whatever it is from a negative perspective or a positive perspective that you're looking to feel. So with digestion, it's really important to understand why, this question, why, 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 why do I feel this way? And perhaps it's because you're feeling anxious or perhaps you're feeling ratty. Well, you would look towards your flower remedies and see as to which flower remedies are, um, are supportive for these emotions. And um, where is? And so you would look at something like hmm. let's see. I'm just going to look. Um, Trish has put something up on the screen, so I want to look it up. So I'm making sure that I give her the right. Um, remedy. Okay. So we'd look at something like hornbeam. Okay. And hornbeam is someone who has a really, someone who's experiencing the emotional aspects of hornbeam is someone who's feeling really low on energy and who's feeling that um, they need a little bit of encouragement, okay? And so when you're feeling uncomfortable, when you're feeling on edge, sometimes you do need that little bit of encouragement just to help you get over those emotions and hornbeam could be really great. And so what you would do is put a drop of hornbeam under your tongue. You could also put a drop in a large glass of water. The other thing that I am in love with doing is blending something. So I have a blend called Power. It's a little snapshot of what's coming up at the end of this workshop. I've got two little ways in which I use it. So I have the oils that are blended in 
this blend and I've popped hornbeam in this blend so that when I use it on my body, the hornbeam is already in here. So it's a combination of oils and also the flower remedy. And then I've also created a little spritzer as well. And so it's the same blend with hornbeam in it, in it, except it's got a little bit of water and I'm breathing it in. I may also want to place the hornbeam, um, yeah, in, in a cup of tea, for example. The beautiful thing about flower remedies is that you can have it with warm liquids and you only need the tiniest little drop for it to have an effect. And so these flower remedies work on an emotional level and from a subtle level to the point where you will use them and, and almost forget why you needed them in the first place. They're almost like magic, you know. Um, I used to uh, suffer from anxiety as a child and my mum used to always use the rescue remedy for me. And as someone who has experienced what nervous tension and anxiety can do, <laughs> the night terrors, the sleepless nights, the insomnia that plagued me up until my late twenties, uh, rescue remedy got me through that all. I was never someone who reached for allopathic medicine. It just was never in my my thought process. It was never something that I even considered. It wasn't that I made a choice not to. It just was something that never, ever crossed my mind. But rescue remedy and flower remedies were my saving grace. This was before I even got into essential oils. The two things my mom used to do for me as a child was take me to an aromatherapist each and every week. And I would have an aromatherapy massage after she did a full aromatherapy consult on me, asking me how I felt, what I was going through, you know, all of these different things. And then she would choose oils based on the way that I was feeling. And, um, and then I would have an aromatherapy massage with her. So this practice that I'm sharing with you today, the combination of using essential oils and flower remedies has been with me for at least. 33 years. This is not something that I just picked up a couple of years ago and decided to run with it, although there's nothing wrong with that, of course. But it, it has gotten me through some of the darkest times of my life. In fact, uh, Rescue Remedy is a staple in my handbag. I have it with me all the time. And so only over the last, say, 20 years have I gotten to know the rest of the flower remedies. And when I use them, you know, I may go through an experience that's used this, this experience that we used with digestion in the same way from an emotional perspective. If you feel really congested in the belly, let's say, let's say you have this experience where you feel anxious and nervous and you, you don't really know why. Well, you look it up, like you look up all of the emotions from a negative point of view because you're in that emotional state. And quite often, if you're in that emotional state, you know that you, A, want to get out of it. Um, and you can also see what are the positive aspects of that particular uh, remedy. So, for example, when I look up hornbeam, uh, there is that negative state, which I shared with you earlier. But the positive is that you are vibrant and that you focus on the task at hand and you have a joyous outlook and an inner strength that helps you to get up and go. And so you can see that from one perspective to the other, it's two ends of the same coin. And this is how I choose my flower remedies. And by using the essential oil from a physical perspective, and physical, I mean, helping me, whether it be an aromatic anchoring, so smelling it and transporting my brain to a different time and place or pattern disrupting by having this deep inhalation or um, using an ointment on my belly to help relieve the stress and tightness that I would consider it being the physical perspective and then using the flower remedy from an emotional perspective 
where I am literally using the flower as a remedy to move out of the negative state into the positive state. It's just a match made in heaven. And so how I would use it in this particular um, example is to marry up crystals with this ritual. And so let's say, let's go right to the beginning and say that I have created um, some space in the mornings for myself and I am going through a, a period in my life where I'm feeling agitated, lethargic, apathetic. Um, I'm suffering from anxiety. There's just a lot going on in my life. And, and this is a real life example of someone who wrote into me prior to this workshop and asked me just to talk about this. What I would do if it were me now and what I do do every morning is I wake up and sometimes I have five minutes and sometimes I have an hour and five minutes. The time and the length doesn't matter as long as I do it. That's the important part. And I will go to my little reading nook. It's this place in my home that I've created that is specifically for me to do this practice. And I will sit with my lemon water or perhaps my digestion water, depending on what it is that I'm going through. And I will just be quiet and notice how am I feeling? Are those emotions that I experienced yesterday still here? If so, let me create this you know, and you would have created this blend already, which I'll share with you in a second. You would take a deep inhalation of this. Perhaps you've got this power blend that I'm just talking about. I'm going to roll it onto my wrists. Um, I have very specific, particularly for this blend, very specific acupressure points and meridian lines, as well as energy points within the body that I recommend using this blend on. And with each pressure point, massaging that particular pressure point for two minutes, let's say, really feeling into that pressure point and take, taking a deep breath in as you're going through the process. And so what you're doing with these energy channels, if you're moving you know, energy through these lines that run through the body, you're helping clear any stagnation. And the stagnation is is quite likely what's causing the anxiety, the agitation, the lethargy and the apathy. And the idea with this is that we are invoking not only the five senses through smell and touch and sight and all of these things, but we're also invoking the divine, right? These are div tools of divination. And so as you're doing this, you're sitting in that space and creating a really beautiful ritual for yourself in which you are calling upon the universe source energy to support you through whatever it is you're going through or to help you have a great day or you don't only have to do this when you're in negative states you could do this when you're feeling great you know you you're in gratitude for whatever it is that you're experiencing and maybe you're just doing a basic energy clearing practice where you're just taking the energy that um, is on you off, you're just flicking it off for the day. And so I would take the crystals and as I'm meditating, actually have these crystals in my hand and I would have programmed these crystals prior to using them. And so there is a full guide of how to program crystals um, that I can share with you uh, it doesn't have to be complicated. It's a really simple process. There are many, many, many different ways to program your crystals. And you, um, you can choose one of the many ways and, and play with it, I say, for 28 days. In fact, I just did a crystal programming workshop this morning, um, which is a lot of fun. And to begin with, what I would do is sit in meditation and I will nine times out of 10 have a thumb stone in my right hand. And it's exactly what it says. It's a stone for your thumb. <laughs> so that if I am getting lost in my thoughts and I'm allowing my mind to, you know, the monkey mind to take me away on a tangent, I use the feeling of the stone in my hand and I'm just gently brushing the crystal or the gem or the stone 
with my thumb are reminding me where I am and the fact that I'm here doing the practice. So I have these oils that are seeping their way into my body. They're laced with a flower remedy. I've got my mind focused in on the present moment with a meditation to accompany it. I have the crystals in my hand where I have the left hand crystal with the crystal that's actually co that correlates with the energy center that I'm working with. In this case, the solar plexus is the power center. And so the solar plexus is yellow in color. And so I've picked this beautiful um, yellowish stone. It's like a yellow brownish stone. It's jasper, yellow jasper. And the properties of yellow jasper are exactly that, to help you induce and invoke power. And so I'm going to be uh, meditating with the energy, my focus and my energy moving in through the palms, into the crystals, and allowing everything else to work its way through my body. And so that's a very basic way in which I create rituals and a very basic way in which just understanding the reasons as to why you're feeling what you're feeling is the gateway for you to create and cultivate and move through them in a way that is graceful and with ease. And so much so that I've called this product line that I am releasing Rituals for Grace because you allow yourself the time and the space to create the ritual and you follow the guidelines and within time, maybe not in the first, second or third month even, depending on everyone's so different, but you allow yourself the space for grace. And so let's talk a little bit. Does that make sense to those of you that are online? Do you have any questions before I go on to some of the other oils that I want to do riff on about today? And the flower remedies, of course. Are we good? Okay. Let's talk about communication, shall we? The communication center is the throat center. It governs the throat and the neck. And it also governs our ears and our mouth, the way we speak, what we hear. And the three products I want to talk to you about today are lavender, easy air, and mustard. Now, lavender is known as the oil of communication in aromatherapy circles. I use it a lot to calm agitation um, and for concentration. And so what does that have to do with the throat center? Well, when you are agitated, you will find it's very difficult to communicate effectively. Uh, when you are not focused, when you are not present, it is very difficult to convey whatever it is that you're looking to convey in a heartfelt and compassionate way. And so lavender is going to calm down your nervous system so that you can express yourself in a way that feels good for you and for the person that you're communicating with. Easy Air is actually a blend for the heart space. But um, I am using it today as part of the explanation for the throat because when you are gasping for air, when you feel like you cannot get enough air, when you are grieving, when you feel like crying, and this is in response to questions that I've received, you will use easy air. Oh, it just smells so amazing. And so mustard as well. Mustard is an incredible uh, flower remedy. 
and I'm going to just read exactly what mustard is here for you uh, because I have found mustard to be, you can tell, like the bottle's a little bit old and, and I take it with me a lot of places. It, it helps you to build a vision for what it is that you, you want in your life. And considering that this throat center is our center for will, our willpower, you could have all of your energy centers in alignment, but if you do not have the courage to speak your truth and to act on that which you want to bring into the world, if you don't have the strength to speak up and say how you feel and ask for what you want, then it's all in vain. And so as you use mustard, you, remi you are reminded that you can build that vision and you can take your experiences from the past and learn from them and allow them to be your teachers so that you can move forward with that wisdom as opposed to being stuck in the past and being stuck in nostalgia of what you've done wrong or what went wrong you can take those experiences and those learnings and march forward with strength and courage. Mustard in itself is also really great because it helps you to feel super powerful and brings about a sense of joy as you live in the present moment, which is required for you to speak your truth. You have to be in the present moment if you're going to be speaking your truth. And so strength of mind, calm and focused thoughts, stability, unshakable inner serenity and I couldn't think of anything else that I would want to experience when I am looking to develop my communication skills when I'm looking to be an effective communicator and to serve with integrity and love right all of these aspects and so these three um, I'm going to always use when I'm looking to cultivate a sense of willpower right um, the the um, crystals that I will use for that is lapis lazuli. Yeah, so I have a just a tiny little lapis lazuli. I bought this little guy many 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 years ago. And what I may want to do is perhaps lie down and just place lapis lazuli onto my throat center. You could even rest it into the nape of your neck okay and as you're doing that listening to a meditation that is guided in helping you step into whatever it is that you are calling in you're welcome Renata uh, the other parts let's talk a little bit about the brow yeah the brow the brow is the center of your connection with source energy, whoever it is that you 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 want to call it. And um, again, I'm going to call on lavender, but this time lavender peace. So lavender peace is a blend that has lavender oil, but it also has cedar wood. It has ylang ylang and marjoram and Roman chamomile and vetiver and Hawaiian sandalwood. That's okay, Renata. Thanks for letting me know, darling. <laughs> and so this blend brings about a sense of calmness and peace. And so I will quite often use it onto my third eye center. So just a little bit from the cap and just placing it onto my third eye center. Simply by doing that, I get the aroma of it, the aromatics of it. It's a really beautiful, calming, gentle aroma. And then I've got this blend that I've created and it's called peppermint, green mandarin and lavender in itself. And this is what I'm gonna use to take a deep breath in. So I'll pop a drop in my palms and the blend's already been made. I love recycling my bottles, simple and easy. 
I've got the peppermint bottle that, you know, there was peppermint left over. And then I added green mandarin and lavender. Rub my palms together. And so as I am taking a deep breath in of this, I am going to be asking and reciting the following affirmation. Intuition, I'm calling in my intuition. Self-trust, the ability to listen to my inner voice and trust it, to remind me constantly of the innate wisdom that lies within me. And so then I may just rub the back of my neck and I have this um, ability now to relate this particular scent, this aroma with the wisdom tradition that I'm creating, the calling in of my own wisdom. I may use vervain, which is a remedy. And what this blend, which I have popped into the rollable blend of wisdom that I created, um, it brings about clear sightedness, calm, steadfastness, and the ability to follow my intuition, which is exactly what I'm doing when I'm calling on my own inner wisdom. It's not enough just to hear your intuition or feel the tinglings of what it wants you to do. You have to have the courage and the trust to be able to follow it. And so vervain is going to be the flower remedy that really supports you to do that. The other blends um, that I just wanted to speak about very briefly was your jasmine, rose and magnolia. These are straight oils. You can blend them all three together if you want. And you can use water violet with that. And this is for your crown, the crown energy center. And so when you look at uh, all of these incredible oils together, the three oils, they are flower power, right? So they're oils that are high value, they are incredibly grounding, yet they bring about a depth so that the deeper you go, the higher you can fly. I love this as a soul perfume. <laughs> and it's a perfume that I have used for uh, calling on guardians, angels, and messengers from the beyond. And whenever I'm in need of some joy or I'm looking at uh, really cultivating from my heart, when I'm looking to call something in that is from here, not from my egoic point of view or something that I'm looking to fulfill a need in my business or whatever it is, that's okay, Nicole Dallin. Um you can really call on this blend. And so each of these oils have a different um, emotional aspect, property. When you combine it all together, all of those emotional properties form a, a new intention. They form something that's completely new. And when you blend not only the oils and a flower remedy in one divine offering for yourself, you are bringing together all of the different qualities of these oils and of the flower remedy. And in one foul swoop, reminding yourself of the possibility of whatever it is coming to you. And so with that being said, and knowing these oils all have their own meanings, knowing that when you pop them together and you create a ritualistic practice, that you're more likely to invoke whatever it is that you are asking for. I would like to very softly, they call it a soft launch in the marketing world, very softly announce that I am launching within the coming weeks a beautiful new range called Rituals for Grace. And what these products are, are um, do-it-yourself ritualistic packs 
that support you to not only create your own rituals, but help you uh, with practices, guides, and tools as part of these packs to recreate your ritual in a way that works for you time and time again. And so the pack comes in a box. Um, each energy center has a different pack, depending on what it is that you're looking for support with. Each energy center will have um, something completely different to the next. When this does go live on my site, you will have a full description of what it's calling in versus what you know, what would the negative state be? But for the purpose of the soft launch, before I announce it to the public, I wanted to just share it with my community. Firstly, I'm so excited about it that I just, I can't keep my mouth shut about it anymore. I've had them, <laughs> I'm so excited. I've had them sprayed out onto my dining room table. Guys, this has been my dining room table for the last month. Every morning I wake up, I see them and I'm just thrilled. So let me share an image with you of what the products look like. Um, they're just so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Um, these, so the idea is that you make them yourself. What comes in the product box is the oils. So however many oils are in each blend come in the box. You will also receive a flower remedy to match the energy center. And you also have a bunch of crystals depending on whatever it is that that blend is created for. Um, along with that, you have your roller bottles, your spritzes, and a recipe card for each of the blends. And you receive a meditation and whatever else comes with the audio track for the energy center. And also a full guide on how you use that particular blend to help you with the energy in your body. So for example, you'd be working, you know, if you're doing the heart base, you'd work with the heart meridian and then also work with the heart in itself. And so there's maybe two or three pages of different pressure points, energy points, um, and different ways in which you can use the product on your body and in your ritual. They don't have to be used all at once. And so the idea is that you use these tools to figure out which times you feel the best and then sink into that particular um, ritual and ritualistic practice. So if I share my screen and just show you what the products look like, um, once they're created, you receive with it, can you guys all see my screen? Can you see the image? I can't see your faces. So can you see my screen? Oh, okay, you can. Great. I've just seen that. So you see the, the seven bottles? You see the seven bottles? Yeah, okay. And so the bottles come with labels. So you DIY it, you make it for yourself. It comes with the empty bottles. And also um, what also comes with it, so it comes with the roller bottles and it also comes with a spray bottle. And the spray bottles are so bloody nifty. I love them so much. Let me show you. Can you see that? Okay, so you get a, a little spray and a little uh, roller ball. You get the labels that are just ready for you to stick on. And the reason that I haven't made them up and I'm not selling them um, or offering them as a product on their own, because I did think about it, 
But the reason is because I want for you and for everybody who purchases these packs to have an experience with the creation of them. There is something so special about making something for yourself, knowing that as you're creating it, you are infusing your own energy with the creation. So along with this pack, there's a music playlist. And so you, from the moment you open up your box, from the moment that you receive your parcel, it's a ritual, it's an experience. You popping on your music, you've got your oils out, you're listening to the playlist, you're using the affirmations that are on the labels that you will never forget that, you know, if you've chosen the wisdom pack, it says intuition, self-trust, like you know that you're creating this pack because you're looking to connect with your intuition more. And there's something very individual about, for you, what is it that you're calling in and how are you looking to infuse your own energy by creating it? So you're, you're making your blend, you're putting it all together. You can make it a hundred times over because you have the bottles with you. It's not just a set and forget. You can um, add a little bit more of this or take out a little bit of that. You know, um, there's some of the blends have got things like fennel in it, which is an incredibly powerful blend uh, oil for subtle, subtle aromatherapy purposes, but a lot of people don't like the smell of fennel. So as long as you've got one of those drops in there, you can kind of change it up to suit your own smell buds, <laughs> not your taste buds, your smell buds. Um, and then you create your ritual from there. And so, yeah, just really exciting. I'm super chuffed. I'm, gonna, I'm looking at your faces now, this is good. Um, for those of you who are watching the recording, as I said, please let me know if you have any questions at all. Um, each of the packs are priced individually because the products are so different. You know, in one of the packs, I have rose and frankincense as the main ingredients, you know, so obviously there are higher value oils and, and the crystals will also match the particular energy center that goes with it. And so what I'm offering for everyone is a soft launch, then so this will not be offered once it goes live on my website, are free energy consults where I will jump on a call with you for 30 minutes or an hour, it doesn't really matter, where I will help you assess which of your energy centers need a little bit more support a little bit more TLC. I'm doing that in two ways. Firstly, conversation. Secondly, I have a bioenergetic tool that I can finally use, been waiting for it for so long, where I can do distance scanning of you and your aura to help you see which of your energy centers need a little bit of support. And gathering what comes up from the scan will give you a good indication of what it is that you need. Um, in terms of oils, remedies, and, and crystals. And so if this, you know, if this is of interest to you, please reach out to me. Like I said, I'm only offering these consults prior to the actual launch. I'm not offering this on social media or any channels where people are not part of my community. So I'm only offering this through this workshop I may send something to uh, my newsletter list at some stage, I haven't decided yet. But for those 40 odd people who have registered for this workshop, I'm offering it to you. So happy to uh, jump on a call um, and help you. Yeah, just be of service and help you see which of your energy centers need a little bit of support. I'm going to stop the recording so I can spend some time with the attendees. Um, so for those of you watching the recording, thank you so much for spending this hour with me. I hope that everything uh, made sense and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Bye for now.